Hello everyone, today in this video I'll be discussing the second module of BDS, super important questions and uh, the subject codes are two for this subject which is BIS 701 and BCS 714D both have the same syllabus and all the questions are valid for both of these subjects and don't miss any of these questions, these are the most repeated from the previous papers and before starting please do like and subscribe, it will give me more days like this and if you have any questions or if you want the PDF of this, you can DM, DM me on Instagram here so without wasting more time, let's get started. The first question is what is Hadoop? Explain why Hadoop is preferred over traditional RDBMS. Yeah. Hadoop is an open source framework developed by Apache Software Foundation that allows the storage and processing of very large data sets. Okay, like big data will be there, right? To store the big data and process the big data, Hadoop is used. Okay. RDBMS is not used because it is not designed for large data. Okay, it will fail if it tries to process or store a large data. Okay. It uses a cluster of commodity hardware and follows a distributed, fault-tolerant and scalable architecture. Okay, it follows a distributed, fault-tolerant and scalable architecture. It consists of three things, HDFS which is used to store, so Hadoop distributed file system, MapReduce is a programming model used for parallel data processing, YARN is used for managing the resources and scheduling the tasks. Okay. Why is Hadoop preferred over RDBMS? It is preferred in big data environment because it overcomes the limitations of traditional database systems. Handles large volumes of data, works with unstructured and semi-structured data. RDBMS requires a fixed schema, whereas uh, the Hadoop, whereas Hadoop does not require the fixed schema. Okay, it can process unstructured data, semi-structured data, and structured data. It makes it far more flexible. Highly scalable, Hadoop, Hadoop provides horizontal scalability, and data and workload can be expanded by simply adding more nodes to the cluster. And fault tolerance is there. It stores multiple replicas of data across different nodes. So if any any node has an error, other replicas from the other nodes will take up its space and it will be corrected. Okay. Cost effective. It runs on low cost commodity hardware while scaling RDBMS typically requires high end servers and expensive commercial licenses. Parallel processing is possible, but RDBMS generally processes the queries on single machine one on one, which is a bottleneck for big data. And suitable for big data analytics like Hadoop integrates easily with tools like Hive, Pix, Spark, HBase making it ideal analytical processing over large data sets. So if we come, uh, conclude we will have the following advantages distributed storage, massive scalability, cost efficiency it's cheaper and supports for diverse data types unstructured, structured and semi-structured data. High fault tolerance is present because multiple nodes have the same replica and parallel processing capabilities are they using MapReduce programming. Okay, so these are the advantages of Hadoop over RDBMS. Next is describe the key aspects features of Hadoop. Okay, it is open source software, it's free to download, use and contribute to. Framework means everything you can you need to develop and execute the application is provided. All the things are provided to uh, make the changes. It is distributed, it divides and stores the data across multiple computers. Massive storage stores colossal amounts of data across nodes of with a low cost commodity hardware and faster processing is present. Large amount of data is processed in parallel yielding to quick response. So these are the five key aspects of Hadoop. Okay. Next is what are the components of in uh, what are the components in Hadoop ecosystem? Okay, so Hadoop ecosystem has normal components as well as core components. Okay, core components are the main two ones, which is the MapReduce as well as HDFS. Okay, this is used for processing. This is used for storing data. Other ones are on top of it, like for analyzing, visualizing, or uh, and querying those things. Okay, so these are few of the components of it. So the main components we'll discuss, which is HDFS, which is storage component, distributes the data across several nodes natively redundant. MapReduce is a computational framework, splits tasks into multiple nodes, process the data in parallel. Okay. And the other ecosystem uh, means the ecosystem has other components which are not core components but the normal components which are Hive, Pix, Scoop, HBase, Plume, Uzi and Maho. Okay. Next question. Given a scenario where a file size is 256 MB. Okay. So there is a file which is something dot txt that is how much? 256 MB. Okay. Now it is to be written into HDFS with a block size of 64 MB. So one block size in HDFS is 64 MB. We want to write 256 MB. Demonstrate how the file will be split and written across the data nodes. Let's assume the file is 256 MB and HDFS block is 64 MB. So it will be split into four blocks each of uh, 64 MB. So 64, 64, 64, 64, total 256 it will be. Right. So it will be in this fashion. Okay. And each will be having a data node as well, which I have not mentioned in this diagram, but it will be replicated across different data nodes. Okay. Next question. 
explain the anatomy of file read write operation in HDFS with the example with the help of neat diagram. Okay, now see how do you read a file and write a file in HDFS. Okay, so there is a diagram here. If you go through this diagram, first the request comes from client to read the file. Okay, first we'll discuss what is the file reading. It will read the file. It will give the command to distributed file system to read the file. It will get the block location where is the file located from the name node. After that, it will start reading the data in FS data input stream. After that, it will uh, read the data into different data nodes. Whatever is the data based on the block size, uh, partition uh, partial data will be stored in each node. And after it is read, it will be closing the uh, input stream. Okay. So the steps are here as follows open the file distributed file system communicates with the name node to get the location of the data after that it calls the read on the stream dfs input stream and it calls the read repeatedly to stream the data from the data node when the end of the block is reached dfs input stream is closed and uh, the close of a command is called and fs data input stream is closed uh, it closes the connection okay so these are the five, six steps in the file reading anatomy. In the same way, we have the file writing anatomy also. First, it creates a distributed file system request and it will fetch from where it is to be written. It will create a new file on which it is to be written and then it will start writing. For writing, it will go and uh, write each uh, partially. Once that partial partial data is written, acknowledgement is sent back in the fifth step. After the whole acknowledgement is done till the end of the block, the um, stream is closed and also it is uh, informed to the name node that the stream is closed okay so those are the steps present you can go through it okay next question explain the role of yarn in managing resources and application in hadoop yarn manages the resources okay so how does it do that firstly a client program submits the application which includes necessary specification to launch the application specific application master so client program wants to launch the application master with all the necessary information now application master is present and resource manager also launches application master by assigning some container so first client submits the application to the application master resource manager assigns a container to the application master application master on both of registers with the resource manager this helps the client to program the query the resource manager directly for the details so now everything is set up during the normal course application master negotiates appropriate resource containers via the resource request protocol now since the task is with uh, application master it will request and uh, negotiate the resources needed for carrying out the task okay and after that on successful container allocations application master launches the container by providing the container launch specification to the node manager from application master it goes to the node manager node manager executes the application code and provides necessary information such as progress status to the application master so node manager is doing the task and application master is getting the report from the node manager okay after that during the application execution client that submitted the job directly communicates with the application master to get the status progress updates via application specific protocol now who is application master reporting to application master is reporting to the client who has submitted the job directly okay once the application has been processed completely application master deregisters with the resource manager and shuts down allowing its own container to be re, uh, repurposed okay means reused for any other task okay so this is how the whole thing happens from the client it goes to the resource manager from there it goes to the application master from application master it goes to the node manager node manager reports to application master application master reports to the client and once it's done it deattaches from the resource manager for the next use okay and few of the things which is what is global resource manager its main responsibility is to distribute resources among various applications it has scheduler and application master okay and node manager is a permission slave daemon and node manager responsible for launching the applications container for application execution okay for execution of the application node manager is present and per application application master it is specific entry its responsibility is to negotiate required resources for execution okay the main thing is to negotiate Write the steps to process data using Hadoop with a example scenario. Okay, how do you process data using Hadoop? Okay, first input data set is split into multiple pieces of data. This is the input data, it will be split into multiple pieces of data. Next, framework creates a master and several worker process and executes the worker process. Each split will be assigned to a different task. Okay, means different node it will be assigned. 
and it will be performed uh, separately okay so client sends the input data to the job tracker job tracker will be tracking the tasks which are divided into different tasks okay different task trackers it's assigned to now several map tasks work simultaneously and read the pieces of data that will be assigned to each map task map worker uses partition function to divide the data into regions partitioner decides which reducer should get the output of the specified mapper when the map workers complete their work master instruct the reduce workers to begin their work first mapper happens again okay. map means in the whole uh, whatever is the input is there we will be getting the count of each in the whole data which we have we will be getting the count of each occurrence of a word and that will be mapping means this word how many times it occurred this word how many times it occurred that is mapping once mapping is done reducing will be done means same words which are there that will be combined as one and some of all the occurrences will be done and kept it here so that is the reduction so once map workers are done the reduce workers will start the work okay after that it calls the reduce function for every unique key for each unique key we will be having an output that will be output will be written to the file when all the reduce worker complete the work master transfer the control to the user program okay so that's what i have uh, just now what i told you about the word count suppose there are occurrences of similar words across 50 files all those 50 files suppose that this is the input okay hadoop definitive guide hadoop in action map reduce design patterns now in map function what we will do we will count hadoop how many time it has occurred one time definitive one time guide one time in this set it is one 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 time in this set all the words are one 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 time now we will shuffle and sort means we will take each common word in a, sub, uh, in a separate space okay after we have done that if we find, uh, find out the count by reducing reducing means instead of two here we will be taking it as uh the sum okay so hadoop is occurred two times like that we will write this is the reduction step which also means aggregation step and this is the final output which will be written to the file okay discuss the importance of partitioner combiner and compression in map reduce jobs okay so map reduce is a distributed processing framework with where performance and efficiency depend on how data flows between the mapper and reducer this is the mapper and this is the reducer how the data flows between them it goes through the partitioner combiner and compression okay now let's see how it happens what does the partitioner partitioner do partitioner do it decides which reducer will process which key value pair okay many key value pairs will be there which reducer will produce which key value pair that is decided by partitioner it partitions which key value pairs we should co pair okay next is combiner combiner acts as a mini reducer that runs on map output before it sends across the reducers before sending to the reducer it will do the reduction before pre-reduction like that okay that is a combiner whatever it can reduce it will reduce and then it will send compression reduces the size of intermediate and final data in a map reduce job once the final data we have got and the intermediate data when it is there it will compress it and make it as small and as um, compact as possible okay that's all for the module 2 and if you found this video helpful please like and subscribe to my channel it helps me to like this and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next